the celebration time for the thousands of Kashmiri pundits settled in various places across India. I'm joined by Kashmiri activist Sushil Pandit for more. Sushil, describe to me the sense of exhilaration that seems to be running in the entire Kashmiri Pandit community right now. I wish I could. I have no words and I don't think it can be described in words. Suffice it to say, I wasn't expecting it in my lifetime. I had uh, given up hope of seeing any such thing uh, leave aside in this measure to ever happen uh, for me to celebrate. So we were preparing our next generation to carry on the fight, okay. to tell them as that to... This is the baton that you must carry forward. Yes. But it seems that it seems to have been resolved for you. So far, uh, the jury is still out on how it's going to play out. What are you expecting? You Obviously, there's going to be uh, some sort of a blowback in the valley. No, first of all, uh, let me put this in perspective. I don't think it is a, a reason enough to declare any kind of victory. All our effort uh, towards repeal of 370 was to somehow make this nation acknowledge the fact that there is a war declared in us. Right. We were in denial. We were describing it in various uh, bewilderingly naive ways that it was alienation, that this was some kind of misunderstanding, that this was on account of some economic deprivation, that it was some misled youth that uh, we needed to throw some sops and we could buy peace, that we could uh, forgive massacres and murders and rapes and a genocide right. in order to win hearts and minds, that we should start applying all kinds of favors, you know, treat them like heads of state. Would you believe when Huriyat would come to Pakistan High Commission to celebrate the national days of Pakistan or for whatever, some consultations right. and photo ops, they would be provided cavalcades from the right. airport as if they were heads of states. They were treated for their ailments across the world. They had passports and visas to go wherever they pleased. They could go to Pakistan, marry there, bring home women, raise families. I mean, it was incredible because when I applied for a passport, I was asked searching questions about if, if I had a criminal record or something. Mm -hmm. Here, mass murderers, self-confessed killers were treated like sons in royalty. Rome. Yeah, huh. Because we were under some mistaken notion that there is some dissatisfaction or misunderstanding and we could win them over. That we could turn a jihadi into a patriot who would at the drop of the hat say Bharat Mata Ki Jai and carry a tricolor. This was the, the naiveness in our response to a jihad declared on us. By repealing 370, India has begun to dismantle the very system that bred this mindset. It is nothing more than a declaration of an intent. There is nothing on ground as yet. Declaration of intent means now we recognize that you are waging a war against us and we now join the battle to defend ourselves. Nothing more than this. The battle is yet to be fought on ground. Absolutely. So there is a long way to go because we, uh, we have allowed jihad to strike roots in Kashmir over decades. They have permeated almost every walk of life, the academia, the media, the civil society, Absolutely. the bureaucracy, uh, even the faculties and schools and uh, uh, government, police, the very mindset, the attitudes. And it all started from the network of mosques. All this needs to be rolled back, weeded out. And that will take painstaking effort. That will take some resolve. It will cost us time, effort, I hope not, but lives. Perseverance. 
lives have already been lost over the last several decades. Uh, the lives that have been lost, and I think that's what Amit Shah said in, in Parliament the other day, that this is a tribute to all the patriots, all the officers, all the Jawans who laid down their lives over the past many decades in the valley. How, what do you see from here on? How do you see the way forward? And, you know, right now everything is, uh, you know, there are memes on Twitter talking about how Kashmir is silent and the rest of it there is really talking about the revocation of Article 370 and how the people who are actually affected by it are not being allowed to speak because there is, a, a, and rightly so, because it is a very emotive issue and it might, there might be a, a situation on the ground which is untenable and which might even, uh, have an adverse impact perhaps uh, for the Indian, uh, for the central government. However, how do you see the way forward from here? I mean, once section 4, 144 is repealed uh, and is, is taken out from there, then what happens? You see, uh, one of them, it, there were some very convoluted uh, equations in Kashmir. Support to Islamism had become the litmus test of our secularism. Pandering to the wishes of separatism was a measure of how democratic you are. Right. Human rights uh, activism meant that you hated your army, your soldiers who defended you. These were the perversions prevailing in Kashmir and that led to their capture of the street, the public places. Mm -hmm. They are not going to give up this easily. Government has taken preemptive measures protective measures to contain the reaction to this, not because the entire state or the valley has been swamped by these people, but they dominate thanks to the arms they have, thanks to an extremely aggressive network that they have created. They manage to silence the patriotic voices, the reasonable voices. And, and the voices who want peace. Who want peace, who want to be with India, who are reasonable about what options do they have when they look around. Right. Thousands of kilometers from Kashmir in any direction, you have nothing but despair, wilderness. Mm -hmm. We are a thriving democracy with great constitution, rights ensured. And, and they realize this, and they realize the real nature of this movement. We need to defang this aspect of militarized, ideologically poisoned, venomous uh, movement. For that, a certain uh, set of restrictions will have to continue for some time and they'll have to gradually uh, taken off, making sure that they don't go out of hand. Because the first responsibility, the primary duty of any state is to ensure order ensure calm, protect lives and protect properties. Towards that, whatever needs to be done should be done and the state must show its resolve. Any mischief, I remember when in 1990 we had to flee Kashmir, if even a fraction of this kind of preventive measures were in, were place, put in place, we wouldn't have fled our homes, we would still be living there. But the then Home Minister of India was Mufti Muhammad Saeed. The then Chief Minister of Kashmir was Farooq Abdullah. Our army was sitting in the cantonment of Badami Bagh, but they didn't have instructions. The yeah. police had fled the posts and it was uh, absolutely open field for jihadis to go for us. Now, that shouldn't be repeated. The, the authority of the state should be felt and miscreants should be made mindful of the consequences of their Actions. mischief that they planned.